There's no safe like Simply Safe. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me and thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring the video. What we're going to be doing to start off with is making sure there are no more issues with the drywall. The drywallers have come in, they've done everything, they've sanded it out, they touched up a few things and they're gone as you know from the last video on this house. But there was a few spots that I need to hit with the sander and then maybe a few things that I'm going to hit with some lightweight spackle and then spray the house out in primer. As I'm going around sanding looking for issues, I've noticed that a few of my receptacles have um, gone missing. So I had a workbox right here, and then there's a few other places that I think I had them. So I pulled up one of my videos before the drywall went up, and I do indeed have one right there. It's just they drywalled over and didn't cut it out. So I'm going to try to quickly identify where I had them by just looking around, and I'll go, I would have put one right there. And that's usually where I think it's going to be. So need to get these cut out and then continue with the process. So when you miss a box like this, and I've done it myself uh, before in a house, you can see now the drywall is a little loose feeling. So you just come over to the side where the receptacle is, I mean the stud. It is tight and you should be good everywhere else and right here where I back those screws up this gets covered up with the trim so now that is set to where it should be just uh, just behind the surface of the drywall here we are in the bathroom where I discovered another one this one's not as easy to do the other one was on the edge of the wall uh, in a doorway so I was able to open up the wall and see where it was exactly and go from there so I pulled it up um, in a video where I've got before the drywall and it looks like it's right here. So there is the wall, the framing forms a corner, the two by four comes out about right there and I think the receptacle's here. When I rub my hand down I can feel the bump but I don't want to be off of it. I don't have to do much repair right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, measure up on this side. We'll do this real time. We are at 44 inches to the center of the box. Now, I'm going to assume that I did things the same and come up 44 inches and we'll make just a little mark on the wall. All 
right, so that should be the center of the box. And I'm thinking I've got maybe like an inch and a half, two inches on that two by four right there. So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna experiment. I'm just gonna poke my screwdriver through the wall semi-gently. I can fix little small holes easily. All right, I'm on the edge of the box. All right, so I'm on the edge of the box. This is the center of the box. Yeah, so now it's in the box. So I'm slightly on the outside of the box here. I'll just hit this with spackle, uh, but I probably don't even need to do that. That will probably get covered by the... Um, um, the, the outlet plate. Now what I would do normally, I would just roto zip around this box and it would be perfectly clean. But one of my houses, sadly, somebody got into it recently and it's a house that had a few things and a few tools and stuff and my roto zip was one of the things that got stolen. So I've got to use a terrible, rusty drywall uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and bust this out first where I can really figure out where everything is. All What I have to be careful of is to not screw the wires up. The wires go out the back side, but still, I don't want to hit anything. So, there it is. The drywall got a little bit more chewed up on this side than I would have liked. But that's a problem with a saw. Um, but nothing harmed. The box is ever so slightly looser than it used to be. What it did probably you know, is bent the nails. <clears throat> you know, what you can do, you're not supposed to do it, but sometimes what people will do is they'll at a at an angle run two screws through the uh, through the box into the stud, like if it's uh, super loose. But I don't think you're really supposed to do that. Right now, you can save big on Simply Safe Home Security with up to 20% off. If you've been considering home security, now's the best time to act. Most of you know why I became interested in a home security system, and it's the same reason that most of you are interested. Concerns over the safety of our families. My wife was with child, and all of a sudden, I felt a greater need to secure my home. Through a recommendation of a friend, I became more familiar with Simply Safe. Along with the great hardware is the 24-7 professional monitoring that is now powered by Fast Protect technology, exclusively from Simply Safe. When a threat is detected, the Simply Safe monitoring professionals promptly contact you and dispatch first responders to your home, even if you are away or unable to respond. Simply Safe costs less than $1 a day contract free. That is less than half the cost of traditional home security brands, and you can start and stop anytime with no hidden fees. Setup is easy with peel and stick backings for mounting sensors, meaning there's no need for an installer to enter your home. With a Simply Safe system guarding your home inside and out, you can rest easy that if anything happens, the threat will be detected and the proper authorities will be dispatched. Save up to 20% off when you sign up for interactive monitoring. Visit simplysafe.com slash homemade home to customize yours.
here in the kitchen where the dishwasher plugs in right through this drywall. In the video, I can see that underneath this receptacle comes straight down and I'm on the other side of a double up two by four. So I'm just using a knife, razor blade will work a little better. And then the thing is, it was screwed down on the top of this box, so if you watch these screws right here, they're gonna pop through the compound. See right there? All the way up to here, even over here, and that's as far as it goes. So I'll tighten all those screws up a little bit and spackle those. Doesn't, I don't even have to do that right here. This is all below the counter, but I just wanna get the board tight to the wall. The downstairs has been taken care of, floors vacuumed, everything is prepped and ready to go. I'll be spraying using a Graco X5 sprayer. This is Valspar PVA primer for drywall and uh, various lights set up. I went ahead and just bagged my other lights because I don't want them to get too dirty. The battery ones don't care about this one. So let me go ahead and get started. I'll be doing the ceilings first using the extension on the spray gun. Got the ceilings primed and then the two end walls just because they were higher but I just went ahead and sprayed the bottom out since I had the wand on there. The closet and these uh, short walls I'll come back in here and hit after the extension wand 
is pulled off, but I'm gonna use that in the, up in the stairwell and then in the uh, ceiling in the other room.
I'm all done and I'm about to lose my mind. I've been in here doing this for 14 hours straight. I had to go to Lowe's once in all this, but I've been working for 14 hours straight. There's been some problem solved. It hasn't been constant painting that whole time, but I have not really uh, taken it easy whatsoever. But this is living room. You already saw upstairs. We're gonna breeze through this. Um, ran into some problems in here with this window. The plastic came off and I sprayed the window really bad, so I took everything apart and uh, washed it. And then about then I lost total inter uh, interest in entertaining y'all. So I went ahead and just sprayed it out. I don't even know what I even last shot. Um, uh, I think it was in this room here. But painted, we're gonna look at this better in the daylight. Bathroom painted, kitchen painted. I am done with y'all for tonight. Um, the gun is, uh, the sprayer is sort of cleaned. Uh, forget everything else. See you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Forgive the attitude as I closed the video last night. I'm going to do a little breeze through the house, show you the end result. Very clean looking. Shaping up nicely with each step, looking more and more like a house. Other than the f condition of the floors, if you just had the rings on the can lights, smoke alarms, and the face plates on, it would, you know, look pretty darn close to a finished house at this point. Once you get to this point in a house, it really, things do go quickly. There's still a lot of steps to do, but things are so much easier because they're not like, I don't know, they're not like just difficult, nasty projects. So again, um, just to kind of show it, this is the Graco X5 sprayer is what was used. And then I used a Valspar PVA um, primer. Dining room. You know, what, what happened also is, is when the drywall went in, it made the house look small. And then when it got painted, it looked like, or just walking in it today for the first time after working on it last night, but I didn't leave the house with a very positive attitude last night, so I wasn't like looking at it, thinking about the job positively. I'd been in here for, you know, way longer than I wanted to. Um, but the house looks like it got a little bit bigger. You know, it just kind of, I would say, opened it up. And that's one reason I like white is because like when houses are painted different colors, like the, the difference between one room and the next, like I'm standing here, you see how this kind of like feels like a room because this isn't, there's not like a color here and a color here. Like it just feels like the color is just flowing all the way through. And then there's the, the bright airiness of white. And then you can, you can brighten up the house in all different types of ways, you know, with your furniture, how you trim around windows, window treatments, um, you know, the design of the kitchen, the color of the flooring. I just like white. I think one of the nicest looking uh, color schemes are white walls and then bare wood trim. The right type, like a like a cherry color. It doesn't have to be cherry, but sort of that, what people think of as a cherry color. You know, I think that looks really nice. Um, kind of a craftsman style thing, I guess. But, you know, kitchen. So that's the bathroom with the light on it in there. Sun porch. People uh, take issue with this little room saying that it's like this weird useless thing and I should have just got rid of this wall. But with a size house like this, like, you know, I, I've kind of discussed it. Long story short is, you know, you don't have to use that door if you don't want to. If you just want it to be a breezeway, a mud room, you know, place to take your shoes off, hang some coats, uh, you know, store some things in here, whatever it is you can. But, you know, if you also want it to be like a little playroom for children, you could you know, just a little sitting area, somewhere to go that's quiet, separate from the rest of the house, um, which is valuable because not everyone that will be in the house at all times will be someone who lives in the house. And uh, you don't, um, you know, as a guest, you might not want to go in someone's bedroom. Just realized a mistake I made. Forgot to tape off my hinges. I did it on my other door. So I blasted my hinges with paint. I don't like doing that. Um, I can get it off, but oh well. So as we walk out, you'll see things from different perspective. And as you see the house kind of tightening up like this, you know, feel free to give me your thoughts about like the next step being painting, what sheen to use. I usually use flat white. I know it can get dirty easy from like hands rubbing. It's not as washable, but I really like the forgiving nature of it. Um, when you do future repairs like spackling and then quickly paint, 
like the little small stuff. It just doesn't have to be as perfect as a paint with a sheen on it. Um, and I think colors, uh, it's like a white car. A white car just looks nicer. If, as long as it's washed, they, they look nicer longer, in my opinion. They can hide things better. And I think white walls are the same. Bathroom. People take issue with the bathroom in the kitchen. We've discussed that. So the only thing I didn't do painting-wise is I didn't paint in here yet. Um, so they put this board up, and this was as far as they took the uh, joint compound, which, you know, it's fine. They didn't even need to do the joint compound. They could have just screwed it up, and I would have been fine. It would have been easier for me to deal with. Now I'm going to have to come back in here, and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll joint compound it out and sand it up and then just paint this just to kind of clean it up and paint this just to uh, make things look the same. All right, let's take it upstairs. The video's been going for five minutes. I don't wanna take it too much longer. This clip at least. So areas like this are where a sprayer is a beautiful tool to use. All these angles, getting way up into these spots. Even the sprayer had a trouble getting up into this acute angle without spraying like way too much paint. Um, some of these spots, you know, you can go in before you paint and hit them with a, a brush, reach up in there, and then when you spray over, it'll mist over the paint, but any areas where the paint has a hard time because, you know, paint can only get where the air's flowing. So if the air's doing something like this in that corner, it'll shoot the paint right back out. Um, but you can do kind of like little touch-up type painting with a brush first. Sprayer's beautiful in the stairwell. It's a little tricky because I had that wand on there. So I sprayed it out with the wand first, rolled it the best I could, then went back up the ladder and sprayed it with the uh, extension wand off. But yeah, makes for easy work because I could get like right here, reach my arm way up, then there's the extension and paint that out. You know, doing all this with a roller would be, would be tricky. You know, especially if you're going up ladders and you're kind of like reaching up and leaning back and then all of a sudden everything's white and you lose, you know, frame of reference of where you're at. Feels like you get off balance. Look at these rooms. I think they're beautiful. Let's think about what this house was. It was a rotten, soggy mess. This is why I like fixing stuff and not building new stuff. Building new stuff, I don't want to say it's easy, but, you know, uh, there's so much stuff around that's, that's it's in rough condition that could be fixed up and you're not adding another house and packing things in more and more and more, using something that's already there. I'm not somebody that's like saying this from some recycling point of view, more of like a conservation point of view of land. You know, it's not even the house. It's, I don't give a hoot about a house. It's just a bunch of materials you can buy at Lowe's. There's nothing special about it, you know, um, outside of any sentimentality you have. But um, I think sometimes people get hung up on a house like it's a home it's like, okay, it may be your home, but like a house itself, again, is just a bunch of stuff that is sold at Lowe's. Everything in this house, you can just go to Lowe's and buy it. Um, so for me, it's about when I see farms that get bought and huge developments built on them, and then you know that there's like these old neighborhoods sitting around with like a quarter of the houses are just completely empty because the houses are rough like this one was and they don't get fixed up. I know it's to two totally different things. I'm not blind to that. But still, again, the sprayer, it's perfect in places like this. All this just weird angles everywhere, weird spots. Like in trying to roll all this out, you would have to have multiple size rollers and brushes and it would just be a pain. Those lines don't look super straight right now just because the paint is still drying um, right on those beads. Not beads, corners. Again, sprayers are great. Spraying in all this stuff. It just gets the paint on the wall quick. And then with that back rolling process, again, it's just for adhesion. You know, just to, to press the paint into the uh, drywall. finish it. It gets the uh, sort of the uneven spraying um, more even. Great room. I think I've said it already. I think this is my favorite bedroom of the two. They're both, they're both really nice, but it's so funny. As soon as you paint a house white, you really see how many like work boxes and how many holes are basically in it. All the vents and 
lights, receptacles. Nice big closet. Yeah, I really think the painting this house white did a uh, did it some favors. I say painting, it's just primer, but it's just, you know, an example of the color. And in here, I was gonna do a special primer, but the PVA primer is an inexpensive primer and it's sealing the drywall. I think I may come back and paint over this with a more high quality primer. I don't know if that is any point in doing that, but one of these like bathroom specific mold resistant primers, but by putting this one down first, it's not gonna eat up as much primer for the next one. So this would be sort of to seal it. The next one would be a higher quality primer and then using a high quality paint. Um, you know, usually I use sort of middle of the road stuff, inexpensive to middle of the road. Um, but here in the bathroom, I think I'll go just a little bit nicer maybe on the primer. And that is because this is just normal drywall. And then inside on the hardy backer, all those joints will get taped. And then this will get one of those, I don't know the names of them, the brand name, but the, um, the sealer that goes over that before the tile work is done. So I think that is it for the tour. Take a look from this angle. These rooms look so much bigger, having the ceilings vaulted and being painted white. So much bigger. So let me know about your color preferences and sheen preferences and your thoughts on it being rental versus selling it versus living in it, all those types of things, all that type of stuff um, comes into play. You have to think about long-term maintenance, um, uh, costs, the added, you know, if you were to paint all these walls a color, you know, where do you stop? The color go to here, does the color go to here? You know, you're gonna be painting a color up to a white ceiling when you do everything white, it's nice and easy. I was gonna skip out and just end the video with the last clip, but I figured I needed to uh, do a little bit of talking. Um, this will probably be the last video showing active progress for the for this year, um, but obviously it'll just be next month when I post another video probably. Um, I might do a video showing the drywall progress again, kind of condensed down into just a few minute video. I, I really kind of want to do that because it was such a big transition. And I would I would like to do a lot of the videos that way. I just think it might be like confusing or annoying to like regular viewers that just wanna watch the 20, 30 minute video if I always put out two videos. Although I think if you put out the, the short one first and then the long one, I don't know. I don't know what the best order to do it is. Doesn't matter probably. Um, but I'd like to do it for the crowd that doesn't wanna watch long videos or to bring new people in. Um, what else to talk about? Oh yeah, cost of this video, the priming. I talked with the drywaller, this is back when he quoted the drywall job, if he was to prime it and paint it. And I, I wasn't too interested in the painting, but I, I did just ask him, you know, if you primed it, what would it be? And he said, just labor, not including the paint, it would be $1,400 to prime the house. Um, I don't know how they go about it, if they spray or come in and roll it or what, but $1,400 plus I have to buy the paint. I spent $60 per five gallons of paint and I had to use more than 10. I think it was like probably 12 or 13 gallons. So I had to buy 15 gallons worth of paint. So I spent $180 on the primer alone. I bought a respirator, it was $36. Then I bought uh, the little sock thing that goes over my head, already had the white suit, had some rollers, had my roller frame, the stick it screws onto. So some of the stuff I had it, obviously the sprayer. But as far as the stuff I had to purchase for this particular project, I probably spent $200 to $225 to prime versus $1,400 labor plus the additional $200-ish for the materials. So it would have been about $1,600 to, um, to have it primed. And I did it all the priming in 14 hours. And then um, the day before I painted it, I got a bunch of stuff together. So I basically burned up the day before semi-inefficiently getting all my materials together. Um, I am not very efficient in the way I work at all. So I, I get easily distracted and all that kind of stuff. So I'll think, if I think something's gonna take me a day, it's gonna take two days. If I think it's two days, it's probably gonna take three-ish days. You know, I, and it's not because I'm underestimating it, it's just because I just, 
it's just the way it is. So a lot of times in comments, you see these like real flattering comments where people think you're doing everything in a much more impressive way than, you know, than you really are. Um, and I like addressing that because I think it's a bad idea for people to get this unrealistic idea of how good other people are at stuff. Most people are, you know, you know, wading through mud trying to get their projects done. It's very tricky to do anything time-wise, money-wise, experience-wise, and then just your realistic skill level, like whatever that is for each person. Um, I am fortunate to be very handy. A lot of that's just, I think, natural slash I've just done a lot of stuff, and it's just helps out big time. Um, and then there's other people that the interest to do things grows much easier and quicker than their skill level. Um, so uh, doing stuff is not always very easy. And then of course, even if you have all the desire in the world on bigger stuff like this, there's very realistic costs. Like, you know, hearing $200, $225 for the materials to do what you saw in this video, doesn't sound that bad. But, you know, think of that as a percentage of average income and then all the other stuff you have to spend money on and then fitting it in time-wise. And it's not like you just blast it into someone else's house and painted it. You're, you've got to buy a house, you know, so there's however much that's going to cost you and all the work that leads up to the point where you would even do it. So it's all a big deal. So it's good to know that it is a big deal, but at the same time, you can do it. See, a lot of people would think of it as like, oh, it's too big deal, I'm not going to do it. He's telling me it's too hard. It's too much money. It's all this. Look at how long I've taken to do this. That's a combination of spreading out the costs, living a, living a life and not wanting a house to own me because people would say stuff, you know, people will say things like, yeah, but if you just got it done, you'd have it done. As soon as I get this one done, I'm just going to do another one. It's, it's a nonstop, never-ending working on houses. So I don't want, that's sort of my job. I don't want my job to be the thing that steers how I live. So that's just the way it is for me. But I think that that is probably the case for many people. Um, what else? Uh, saw a thing YouTube sent me. This is pretty interesting. They said that my since I've started my YouTube channel that I've had 95,000 comments. So almost 100,000 comments have been left on all my videos collectively. And I think that's pretty neat because, you know, a lot of comments are just the pats on the back saying thank you, really cool project, all that, and, and that's wonderful. But a lot of comments are things like people asking questions people saying things like, I've, I've watched your videos and I'm looking for houses now, or I bought a house, um, or like a year ago I bought a house and I'm watching your videos as inspiration of how to do things and what to do. So those types of, types of comments are really neat because it's a person that is taking action and then the videos are engaging to them. Um, and so very pleased with that. I think it was like a million some views this year. I don't know, 1.3 or 4, something like that. And, uh, and then it had it broken down to minutes, which it sounds absurd. It was, uh, you know, whatever millions, I think it was like 16 or some, I, I don't know, whatever big number millions of minutes watched, which that really is a more accurate idea than, than how many views, because a view is just a click, basically. The minutes are how many minutes added up people actually sat there and watched it. So um, that's pretty neat. Um, as far as Simply Safe goes, uh, Consider how long they've been sponsoring the channel now. So that is a big deal for me. Sort of the relief that that gives me as far as like how hard I have to work and how constant I have to work at this point in my life having a family and to be able to do the projects that I do that I show on this channel and the other channel. Um, so I'm pleased with that, obviously. And uh, so big thank you to them. Sorry I got distracted for a second. Uh, and I would, I would really appreciate it if y'all would say thank you to them as well. Um, be cool to know how many of y'all have purchased systems as a result of kind of learning about Simply Safe or making that next move to buy a Simply Safe system. Off the videos, you can let them know in the comments or send them a message, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if you're not already following the other channel, The Homestead Craftsman, that was the first YouTube channel I ever started. I just posted two videos on there. One was um, getting the bark off the trees that I ended up using on the sawmill building. And then another one about getting a poplar tree that got hit by lightning. And that's just kind of a neat tree that got hit by lightning. And to see how much the lightning destroyed the tree. But then at the same time, I got two big logs out of that tree that I ended up milling them. Uh, it's right behind the camera. I wish I could I'll show it to you. It's a mess everywhere, but I'll show you. 
So that stack of wood right there, it's a bunch of two by tens. Ignore the mess. I positioned the camera to where it wouldn't show all the uh, all my junk sitting around. But uh, that is a bunch of two by tens and two by fours, and those will be used to frame up sort of the upstairs room on the other side of the building in the direction the building is being built. Um, framing and floor joists, and then I'll need to cut up some more two by sixes. And I'm sitting on a bunch of those, and I've got more right there. Um, but yeah, um, and of course the nine thousand dollar house is a successful series on this channel. The other one where I called the $2,000 house, which, you know, it's kind of iffy whether or not it's a house or not. I was kind of taking liberties calling that a house, but it's also just a sort of consistent titling on this channel, so that's sort of part of it for me. Um, for me, you know, abstractly calling it a house is, it's sort of this sort of, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, barn dominiums? Not really. You know, it's like an off-grid man cave office loft guest house-ish type thing that can serve many purposes. And of course, just because like, you know, you could call it a square dancing hall. It's, you know, whatever it's used for is what you can call it. You know, it's, you know, so something like that could be thought of as like this house with this like big pavilion area between the two sides, you know, stuff like that's really neat, I think. Um, and, I, and, and other people are bothered by it's, you know, obviously it's near power and I'm calling it off grid, but it's not hooked up to anything. It's just basically a barn sitting in the middle of a field. Um, so one could go for alternative types of power, water sources, whatever. It's just, it is what it is. It's not a normal house. Um, uh, I would, of course, love it if that one became more popular. I think it's just the, uh, you got different types of viewers, and, and I think this channel appeals to more people who are interested in, in strictly, like, their house home than alternative building type stuff. But I'm probably going to also do a separate series edited differently that I post on the other channel where I specifically talk about it more as a sawmill building. So, all right, that's it. Greatly appreciate all of y'all watching this year and all the years and all of the uh, sponsorships from Simply Safe. And you can check them out, simplysafe.com slash homemade home. Um, guess that's about it. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see you next year.